welcome back we've now been joined by a guest in the studio you know <laughs> i don't know where to start from but i've been trying to get this guest for a long time and finally i get to meet her in person well today we have a marriage counselor an expert in relationship matters and author of many books including uh bedroom dynamics that one i love so much and well her name is uh, beauty or chani is it Akwai? Akwai? <laughs> i'm not sure Akwai. Akwai. Yeah. yeah it's good to have you join me thank join you. us finally yeah finally, finally. How do you do? thank you How do i'm you do? fine thank you it's good to have you so let's go and get down to business because we're far out of time you know you for me i was i was uh, speaking with uh, madame kaiti earlier and i was like oftentimes you hear people that ah, marriage is difficult marriage is hard work marriage you need a lot of strength energy if you must survive in marriage but every saturday there's a wedding you get invitation an invitation or even more and then that brings into my first question why do people get married is it imperative you get married okay thanks for having me once again okay the, the first statement you made about marriage being hard mm. difficult and all i wouldn't necessarily say marriage is um difficult but i'll say it's hard work mm. yes because when you say difficult i feel the word scares people mm. but when you say it's hard work it prepares them for what to expect because one thing is sure people like the idea of marriage but they don't have the capacity mm. to handle the reality of marriage. That's why when they enter the marriage and they begin to see uh, what we call the reality of it, mm. they begin to feel maybe disappointed. <laughs> is this what all there is to marriage? And sometimes it's because they didn't enter prepared. Mm. Um, then exactly. another thing is, um, sh must everybody get married? Mm. The Bible says everybody must not get married. Mm. Mm. And if you must get married, there's a grace for it. Yes. Yes. So you don't have to feel bad and you don't have to get married mm. if you know that you don't have the capacity to give it mm. all it takes. Because most times people just get married not really knowing what marriage is. So they just go into it not being really prepared to mm. handle all that comes with marriage. Mm. So the thing is that you don't really have to get married. Yeah. You just said you don't really have to get married. You know, we are in a... I, 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 our own climb, our own uh, belief here, mm -hmm. especially in this part of the world, is you now you just said everybody must not get married. You don't really have to get married. Mm -hmm. But here, the if you come out there, the society, our own society, if you come out as a woman or a man to say you are not married, in fact, by the time you are like 35 as a woman, you are not married, yeah. it's as if you need deliverance. Yeah. It's as if. Um, there's a big problem. Mm. Can you talk more on that? Well, I think it's the way our culture is, is built, mm. right? Um, in other parts of the world, it's not like that. Exactly. So I can say that majority, you know, you get to a particular age and even not just the culture or mm. the society, even the people in your own family, yes. they're asking you, when are you bringing it's right? It's part of the culture. <laughs> <laughs> it's part, it's part, of, part the of the culture. Of the culture. So <laughs> that's why I keep telling people that don't allow anybody to put you into pressure. And, and I'm going to tell you, this is one of the major reasons why people marry wrong. Mm. Exactly. Because we have people marrying for the wrong reasons. Because some are marrying because I have to. I'm of age. Mm. Um, my friend is getting married. So the pressure is more like it's getting worse. And every day people want to say, okay, let me marry so that I can even bear the title. So what I tell single people is that nothing is really missing in you mm. if yeah. you are not married. Yes. Is marriage good? Yes. Mm. Am I married? Because some people are going to say, yes, yeah, she's married. Yeah. And she's saying you don't have to get married. I'm a Christian. Mm. And Paul said in the Bible that if you know you can stay. You stay. <laughs> you should stay. You don't have to get married. But the thing is this. We're already in the society where people are going to talk, mm. but you shouldn't let what they say pressure you into marrying less. Mm. Yes. Mm. And when I talk about marrying less, I'm talking about marrying below standard. You mm. know, mm. when this particular person you want to marry is not 
even going to meet the pedestal that is set. Like your spec. Spec is another thing. You get right? Like she said, it's modern. It's like more like another thing. Yeah. Um, everybody has a spec. Yes. Us, we are all different. Yeah, and exactly. what appeals to us, what we love or what we appreciate is different. So mm. what she may appreciate in a man may be different from what I appreciate in a in man. man. So what I really mean by um, that statement, not marrying down, is not marrying what you regret waking up to every day. Mm. Because mm. people are mounting pressure on you to get married. Mm. So you have to know that, okay, this person I want to go into, the person has value for marriage. Mm. The person understands what marriage is. It's and it's what risking my life for. Because I, I normally tell people, your marriage is not about you. Mm. It is about the children you give birth to tomorrow. It's about your dreams. It's about your career. So people marry for themselves alone. No, it's not just about you. Marriage is more like at the center of your life. It touches your career. It touches your spirituality. It even touches your vision. Because I know of people who got married and everything about them went down. Mm -hmm. Not because the person they are married to has a spiritual problem, but the person does not have the capacity to handle their vision and their dreams. So they just married this person because they wanted title. to. Forgetting that God didn't just bring you into this world to marry alone. There are other things he brought you into exactly. the world to do. Mm. So are you neglecting all those other things? Are you marrying in spite of um, in spite of your career and you're saying, okay, marriage is all there is to life. No, it's just an aspect of your life. It is. So there are other things that you can do. So it stands at the center okay. of your life. So if you're going to get married, Make sure the person is worth it. Okay, earlier you said that people go into marriage without knowing what marriage is all about. Please tell us what is marriage about. Okay, for people, okay, m marriage is about many things. Mm. It's about companionship. It it's is the main thing. <laughs> That's the main thing. Two is a covenant. See, nothing scares me like attending a wedding and I see people taking their marriage vows. And mm. the question I ask myself is, do they really know what they are saying? Because a covenant is more like an agreement. And there's always a third party. Now, the third party I'm even talking about are not your relatives or your friends mm. that in attendance. I'm talking about God mm. is there. Mm. And in the presence of God, you are saying, I'm going to love this one person in sickness, in health, in good, very and in bad, covenant. you know, they are saying they are entering into a covenant, and you are saying, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Mm. And one week later, you are tired. Mm. Mm. Like, do they really know what they are saying? So, we've gotten to the point where people now write vows by themselves, <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> to suit what they like. I believe in faith, but let's talk reality. That's why many marriages are can never be all rosy, like, ah, many marriages. People have watched too, too many Telemundos. So it's good to perhaps <laughs> confess what you want to remind Of course. But the reality of it is you will be faced with ups and downs. That's just the reality. There are two aspects to life. Mm. Good and, and bad. bad. Yes. The Bible talks about how when you go through the waters, I'll be with you. You go through the fire, I'll be with you. Even if your name is Rose, life is not rosy. Mm. Mm. There's always a good and mm, bad, side, bad to side to life. Most times we are prepared for the pleasure in marriage and we are not prepared for the pleasure. Mm. Yes. So people write vows like for better, for better, mm. for richer, for richer. So <laughs> <laughs> that's those parts. So they are preparing for all the good and they don't look forward to days that there will be no food. Mm. Mm. They don't look forward to the day that this loving person will be like one of the most annoying persons in the world. They don't look forward to the fact that there are going to be challenges. What if, and that's why I say if you marry for the wrong reasons, you'll be disappointed. Mm. Okay, let's say this person married for a job. What if he or she loses that job? Will there still be marriage? Mm. I've, I've seen cases where people married someone who was okay and their partner got blind. Mm. Yes. Wheelchair. Yeah. Bedridden. In my own case, before I got married, I had a major fracture on my leg. Mm. I was uh, used I've used wheelchair, mm. I've used crutches and all and when I met my husband I was still using crutches. 
I wasn't working properly and someone called my husband and told my husband that I want to marry somebody with one leg and the answer my my husband gave the person is what if um it was after i married her she got this accident am i going to leave her because of the accident i'm not using coaches today we've had a rough days in marriage but one thing i can say is this we are all looking forward to the pleasures but we don't prepare for the pleasure but marriage comes with both pleasure and pleasure mm. that's the reality Okay, so um, our topic for today, you said a lot, and it's all boys yeah. down to marriage. <laughs> That's the introduction. <laughs> That's yeah. very our guess. <laughs> what she gets for a living. Wow. Okay, so we are looking at um, addressing challenges in marriage. So I want to ask this question, because um, um, many people are sending some questions to me, and I'm going to ask them, because we are going to ask questions that people would not ordinarily ask. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you think people, who, uh, couples who are madly in love with each other, perhaps even before they got married, or maybe one year to their marriage, at the end of the day, fall out of love. What could be a cause of that? So the thing is, I won't really say people fall out of love, right? Um, love in marriages dies because of what we do and what we don't do. Now, people fall in love, but they don't prepare for sustaining love. Love in marriage is supposed to be sustained. It doesn't survive on its own, right? There are many things you must do to you nourish it. <laughs> of course. It's just like buying a car, right? It doesn't stop at buying car. When you buy a car, <laughs> if you want your car to keep moving, you need to keep adding fuel. Mm. You need to go service it, fix one thing here or there once in a while. So it's not supposed to just run on its own. And that's what love in marriage is like, right? Mm. Um, you get married, the both of you are so in love. And according to research, after one year of marriage the chemistry may begin to fizzle down mm -hmm. now that's that's just like the butterflies you feel in your tummy the both of you are excited because now you have entered the reality stage now the first stage you people go through when you are dating is what we call the attraction stage everybody is bringing their good book to the table mm. and nice i call you you pick ones mm. i can trek for 10 <laughs> miles <laughs> <laughs> i can trek for 10 miles mm. to come visit you you know everything is exciting mm. so when you get married and you enter the first year that's where you see the reality we call it the reality stage this is when you begin to see the not so pleasant aspects of me you know how my mouth smells i don't have to smell fresh mm. look good put lipsticks before i see you you know everything is laid bare mm. now before you know over familiarity begins to set set in they are not so caring like they used to because they feel like i don't need to still do the things i used to do again mm. because i now have this person it's not like the beginning stage where you are choosing to get so one thing we really prepare for before i got married is that we're going to keep this exciting and if that love must remain it has to be sustained it has to be nourished by communication being affectionate understanding choosing to love your partner in spite of what the circumstance may be bearing one another mm. so it's not like the love dies but people stop doing what they do and before you know it, the connection begins to fizzle out. Mm. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Once such a connection fizzles out, how can you reconnect? Mm. Now, the truth is this: most people don't even realize that they've turned, <laughs> they've, they've turned from soulmates to prison mates mm. because they've got into the stage where they are now bearing each other. The first thing is awareness: where are we? What are we? Are we even mm. okay? Because the fact that people live together does not mean they are happy yes mm. so some are just living together there's no joy there's no fun so you need to be aware like how are we what are we so for, for my husband and i would do something once in a while um most times we exchange papers mm. and he's going to say okay write some things you know i should be doing that i'm not doing and i i write it write the ones you like write the ones you don't like so i write it and we exchange papers and we go back to work mm. you, you know why we do check-ins which mm. is the second point first awareness is my marriage as good as it used to be second one you do check-ins just like you go for checkup you diagnose what the problem is okay what are we missing what are we supposed to do that we are not doing 
Now it doesn't stop at awareness. So when you 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 do the awareness stage, you now go back to work. It's it's about see intentionality. Mm. Because I discovered that most people know what they are supposed to do for their marriage to work, but they won't do it. Some don't pay attention to it, and some just feel ah, I beg you, is it really necessary? Are mm. we not together? Are we not eating? <laughs> we have children. Mm. Let's face these children now. But it doesn't stop there. So you have to be intentional about keeping that love and connection. And if that does not work, you can seek counseling. Okay, you talked about intentionality. And sometimes it might mean um, calling your partner to order. Some people might just say, ah. for instance, you correct your spouse and the spouse just tells you, I'm, I think I'm still doing the right thing. Or shuns you or perhaps nag. How do you call that kind of a person to order? Okay, so um, first, it depends on how you call them to order, mm. right? Now, th the mistake people make is that we are very critical. And I don't know if you feel comfortable when you are being criticized, mm. right? And sometimes people start a conversation by pointing out all the wrong things. And this can easily displace people. So there was something I learned um, during my master's um, about how when you want to talk to people, both in organizations and off organizations, you use the sandwich approach, whereby you start the conversation with bread, mm. appreciation, look, maybe point out the little things they are at least getting right. Then you put the sandwich, which is bring the main issue. I'm mm. um, sorry, the the longer it took sandwich <laughs> <laughs> you put the rest. vegetables and the fruits and yeah. if you want to add cheese you do then you cover it with okay. appreciation mm. so the thing is this you don't go critical mm. right bring out the issue no appreciate them first bring the issue then close with appreciation mm. when you don't see it i tell people be patient to wait for the ch i posted a video today on my page and I talked about how um, most times when we demand for a change in our partner, we are not patient enough to see the change. Because sometimes what we are trying to change may be something they've, they've lived with for years, right? And we sometimes expect to see the change immediately, we say, stop. Or we say, start. We want them to start <laughs> immediately. For some, it may be difficult. For some, they want to wrap their head around it. Do we really have this issue? Mm. Do I really have this issue? So for some, it may take them some time. So there's a place of patience. Then there's a place of coming back to talk about it. And that's why, see, communication is very important. Very, very important in relationship. Marry somebody that wants to talk. Mm. You can't overemphasize that. No marriage or relationship can survive without communication. So after talking, like I said, doesn't work, it's good to marry somebody that answers to somebody. Mm. Respects somebody. Somebody that can tell them, sit, and they'll sit. That's when you are married to a difficult person. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean you have to take your issues to everybody. Take it to somebody that can help you. So you talk to somebody you know they listen to. That's after you have tried everything and it's not working. Talk to the person. See if that person can reach out to them. Mm. Fine. If the person can't reach out, you try counseling. Mm. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> you switch to coping mechanism. Oh, How wow. can I cope with this? Oh. Okay. So at, at, at what point would you now say, okay, um, let's get a divorce? Mm. I think divorce should be our last option. You know, <laughs> I'm not an advocate for divorce, but there are cases where that is inevitable. But first, when it's becoming toxic, mm. your life is at stake. Your mental health, health is at stake. You can go for what we call separation mm -hmm. now separation is not divorce okay we are going to go s a separate ways for a while to see if we can work on this maybe from a distance mm -hmm. or talk about it from a distance and see if we can still come together so separation so if after working on that it doesn't work mm -hmm. all right let's look at some issues now let's talk about unforgiveness um <laughs> there's this right. cliche that um women find it difficult to forgive perhaps um like even when they tell you they're forgiving you they bring it up in other issues and subsequent issues so how can one deal with that in a marriage okay talking about unforgiveness now 
first we must understand the difference between a man and a woman women and men are two different things i remember mentioning it to my husband once that how did god even expect such two different people Can to coexist because human uh, women are emotional beings men are logical beings and most of the time us women may not appeal to the men right so um for women they take time to process issues women are deep thinkers <laughs> you know you do something to a woman she's gonna make it that thing turn it upside down to think okay why did this person really we just look at it oh it's just flower yeah. i beg it's flower the color is pink but a woman will pay attention to the details the yellow the design and everything so most times it's i tell you that you must you may have forgiven but because um you have not healed the pain doesn't go away and sometimes if the person keeps doing that thing over and over again it may bring make the issue reoccur mm. once in a while right so for forgiveness i tell people that you just need to forget forgive for your own peace of mind mm. because how can somebody be misbehaving <laughs> and you are killing yourself <laughs> you are not feeling bad you are not you won't have these sleepless nights won't you forgive for your own freedom and there's grace for it and i tell people sometimes you have to go ask god help me help mm. me because sometimes okay let's say if it is in the case of infidelity mm. <laughs> it takes time to forgive okay. no now people will forgive but it may take time for them to heal mm -hmm. and normally it may take like one year two years depending on the indiv individual you know healing processes or time varies depending on the person Involved. their temperaments or or the or the intensity of the issue okay my husband said i should ask you this question <laughs> 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 i hope you're watching <laughs> sir <laughs> okay so it is um infidelity enough reason for a breakup or a divorce mm. we've had well it depends there are many sides to this thing um we've had cases where infidelity happens right and um and i want to put this in a way that won't be misunderstood we've had cases where infidelity happen and the couple go through what we call infidelity recovery mm -hmm. and their marriage goes back to normal but one thing I tell people is this. After an infidelity, your marriage may never be the same again. Mm. Yes. Depending on the both of you. What you do after the infidelity. Okay, we have different types of infidelity. We have the one we call one night stand. That happens mm. just once. Let's say um, the person just fell into the act. Let's say mistakenly. They went for a trip. They got drunk. Mm. Some is just one. Just one. Then the second one is what we call affair. That one is when the person is entangled with this person. Mm. And this is said to happen mostly in workspaces. Mm. Where this person goes and sees this person every day. There's a connection. They see. They talk and all. That one is difficult to, you know, detach. So, like I said, it depends on the response. But there's a Bible. The Bible says, when mm. infidelity happens, you can go. But the fact is this. Like it depends on the individual. Mm. Can you bear it? Like I said, it's going to take time, and is your partner ready to cooperate with you for that healing process? What about people that are married to people who are nonchalant? There are people that will cheat on your face. They don't even hide it. They will tell you. You have to live with. We it. have cases where people bring women home, and the woman is miserable. She's just there, you know. And we've had cases where. Their partners infected the um, the other person with an incurable disease, mm. you know. And infidelity doesn't leave your marriage the same. I tell people, if you have your way, don't even start it. Don't start it. But if you go through infidelity coaching, you meet a counselor, and your partner is repentant and they are willing to change and work on the marriage, your marriage can go back to normal. Okay. So let's talk about submission. <coughs> so um, this this usually <laughs> becomes uh, this usually becomes a debate for many. Like if you go for a counselling, they tell you submission, they hammer on it. Um, and I've heard um, some people say like it's okay to submit, but let the man love first 
So then submission can come. <laughs> How should submission work in a marriage? Okay, I, I was expecting this question. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, all right. So um, I think most times the the issue is that we've we've mostly talked about what submission is, and and we've not talked about what submission is not, mm. right? Mm. So um, submission doesn't mean you agree to everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. Submission doesn't mean that you be an understanding wife. Let me give you the idea of what people think an understanding wife is you're a carpet hmm. they match on you whatever they do to you you say yes you, take it. you say yes sir that's not submission but you know in this <laughs> part of the world that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we understand no that's not submission you know submission is is strength put under control now let's look at how the society is made up of <laughs> love that strength put <laughs> under control yes let's look um how the society is made up every organization has a leader we have nigeria nigeria has a leader and marriage as an institution is a structure that needs a leader so imagine a car with two steering wheels wheel screen right mm -hmm. i'm steering one has this so imagine the day you be both of you are arguing husband is saying let's go this way what is saying <laughs> let's go this way they want to divide the car right and i always say anything that has two head is a monster so it just puts in an authority like Yes, an authority over you, like this is an institution, this is a structure. We need a leader here. Mm. So the husband is the head, right? And the thing is this, like I said, submission is not you saying yes to everything. I've I've had cases where okay, a man once reached me from abroad and she was like, Am I supposed to submit in this case? Um, we are abroad and my husband is into drugs. He wants me to sell drugs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, at the end of the day, <laughs> you if, can they cut. if they arrest you, this man will move on with another woman. Of course. So submission does not mean that you, you do the wrong things. Mm. Because, but let me tell you what submission is. It's, it's, it's deferring to somebody, venerating somebody, praising somebody, accepting leadership over your head and i can say submission is very beautiful because i have submitted over the years you know i don't argue over submission i've read my bible mm. what god asks the men to do is harder <laughs> if you ask me he says you will love first he says submitting one to another the second one is that now we just have to submit which is the same thing from the first command that god gave but for the man he says you will love me as christ loved the church Lay as in you go as far as laying down your life. Right. They did not say that I should come and die. <laughs> but you, 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 will die. <laughs> you will die. So if it is submission, it's fine. Mm. Submission is as a woman, you are powerful outside, but mm. you come in and still recognize that you have a mm. leader. A leader. You know where to drop your crown. You know where to say it's it's acknowledging that okay, there's somebody I answer to. Mm. There's somebody that I respect. He is my head. And I'm okay with being the next. So, why is it that some women find it difficult to submit? Okay, I feel it's because maybe the concept of submission has been sold wrongly to them. And we have leaders that are not behaving as leaders. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Bible talks about how the husband should be submitted to Christ. And the wife should be submitted to to the husband when the husband is submitted to christ it's very easy to submit to him because he's being led by christ he understands the principle of the kingdom he's not going to oppress you in the name of submission and it's all boils down i'll still take it back to choosing well hmm. see you have the power to choose who you want to submit to and most women find it difficult to submit because of the kind of person they are married, married to. Yeah. But what I tell people is this. We are not in competition. Mm. Because what we have in marriage today is mostly competition. Would you say, sorry to cut you in, would you say submission has to do with loving? Because you said, you know, like you just pointed out that some people find it difficult based on whom they choose. Yeah. Does that have to do with love? Meaning, if you are not really in love with 
whom you got married to, you might find it a little bit difficult to submit to him. I think it will be e even easier because the person can dominate over the person. Exactly, right? But the, the fact is this, at the end of the day, if you have married the person, you will submit. Yeah. That's the law. Yeah. And that's why I said it still boils down to who you chose from the beginning. Because it says, why submit to your own husbands? And that's why I tell people that, see, the moment you get married, people are going to wave you goodbye and leave you with your choice. Just you and me. Mm. Make sure you choose well, because whatever comes with them, you are going to be the one bearing it first hand, right? Mm. You will bear it first hand. So if you are married to this person, they have money, you submit. Whether they don't have money, you just have to perform your own part of the covenant, right? Mm. Mm. Even if, if it feels like he doesn't deserve my submission, I'm going to do it because I'm doing it unto the Lord, not him. Because the Bible says, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. So my submission is as a service to God. And one thing I've really discovered, right? One of the best ways to enjoy a man is to submit. Because a man is going to see you as an opponent. The moment he feels like you want to drag this position with mm. him. Mm. And, and that's why I'm very comfortable. <laughs> I'm very comfortable with being a helper because that, there's so much responsibility that comes with being a leader. Mm. Yes. <laughs> if this marriage goes wrong, you think God will come and question me? <laughs> Who are we questioning in Nigeria today? <laughs> He's the leader. When, when something went wrong in the Garden of Eden, God came calling. He said, Adam, where are you? It was as if that initiated the thing. But why did he call the leader? So what is some men don't even understand is that <laughs> they say wise woman builds the home. They don't know that they are the ones that are responsible for the home. Mm. You are building what we used to build. So the, the design, it is your responsibility as the man. You have a lot to do as well. So marriage is not one person's work. Mm. So what I tell people is we are not in competition. You make posts today and say men do this. They say what about the women? You make posts and say women, this is what you are supposed to do for your marriage to work. They say what about mm. the men? Like, wh when did we start competing? <laughs> okay. If we all argue mm. and we are not doing what we are supposed to do, we will not have marriage. Mm. Okay, so I have two questions uh, away from submission. Uh, first of all, you talk, uh, spoke about um, helpmates. I, I was on your live where you were talking about the mistakes women make and you said um, and getting um, often so much help in marriage. I, I can't put it exactly in your words, but like there's, there should be a limit to helping a man mm -hmm. or helping the family perhaps yes th you made a statement like that perhaps there should be a limit and also i want to ask can childbearing uh, inability for a woman to conceive in a marriage be a problem in that marriage of course it's it usually used to be a problem but how can it be handled well it can be a problem depending on the people in the marriage I have a first-hand experience. Mm. In my own case, we waited five years before we could, <laughs> we could have the fruit of the womb. Yeah. So I had like five miscarriages, mm. one stillbirth, and it was more like the longest wait of my life, mm. right? And uh, you know when you get married, especially in our culture, the, in the next six months, they are looking at you. Mm. You are not changing size. Your nose is not changing. <laughs> <laughs> they start asking, shall we expect it? Mm. are not posting, mm. you know? The pressure that comes from outside, mostly I feel, is what even causes the intense pain that mm. people feel. Mm. So, childbearing or no childbearing should not affect your marriage. The both of you love one another. You are God-fearing and you understand scriptures. Because one of the things that kept us is that I knew like I knew my name I was going to have a child. Mm. Because the Bible says none shall be barren. Mm. Mm. I had a very supportive partner that won't be blaming me for the problem. Mm. Because that's the problem. You know, some people it's not even about childbearing. You give birth to girls, they say you are not giving birth to boy. Mm. They are not saying I want to go and marry a woman, another woman. No, no, that is what you put in that I'm giving you. So you are the one that will determine it too now. So the thing is this, it affects depending on the level of the maturity of the people in that particular mm. marriage. I've seen couples who have 12 years, 15 years. Yes, they, they may desire children. It will be sad that they don't have one, but their marriage is not affected. Is affected? There, are, there are ways you can have children. You can adopt. But then I had even concluded that, ah, if, even if even if I knew I was going to have it, I'm like, if it doesn't come on time, I'm going to adopt. Because you don't, you don't, you don't become a mother 
um, just by pushing or carrying a baby, mm. you become a mother by from your heart. Mm. You know, you can and adopt a child and by caring. Mm. So you can adopt a child. It's in, if you want to allow it to affect your marriage, that it will affect it. Mm. And that's why it's good to marry someone that has faith, someone that knows God as much as you know God, who will not come and be blaming you for the problem in their lives instead of fighting through it together. And that's why I say these are some of the challenges that come with marriage that people don't prepare for. You allow lack of child um, bearing to affect your marriage. Ap it speaks a lot of Apart your from the, the issue of childbearing, there's, an, there's a problem, the issue of uh, bedroom things. Mm. It has become an issue. <laughs> it has become but an I issue. Yes. <laughs> so, so, how can, because these days you notice men from 40 years are having issues. Mm -hmm. So, could that be a, a reason for divorce? Okay, let me tell you one of the major reasons of divorce. I'm going to list them out. Money, sex, infidelity. These three things are major reasons why people divorce. So, I always tell people that sex... <laughs> is one very important aspect of marriage and i used to say this if your marriage bed is cold your marriage will be cold mm. if sex is cold in your marriage your marriage will be cold sex is a bonding agent it is a bonding agent when it begins to lack in marriage the marriage begins to suffer and like you said, these days we have people in their 40s having maybe erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Some women are beginning to have low menopause and that could be because of um, mm, uh, low libido. It mm. could be because of menopause. When people, um, some women get to menopause, according to research, they may experience low, um, low libido, yeah. dryness in their vagina. Um, they begin to have some health issues, right? I can say it begins from your lifestyle mm. when you are young. Mm. Alcohol is bad. Sugary things are bad. As you age, you begin to see the effects of these things. Yeah. And the problem some couples have is that when they begin to see some of the signs of this problem, they don't talk on time. They just begin to avoid sex. Mm. They begin to claim busy. Okay, if you are beginning to sense issues, it's better for us to start seeking for solution right uh, now. Yeah before it gets out of hand so most of them they are not open to communicate things like mm. this maybe because they don't want their partner to look down on them and or no but if you build friendship and communication is good in your marriage you create an atmosphere where, whereby the both of you can talk about anything so these are things that you should address with your partner on time if you need to seek medical help seek you medical help that. instead of punishing the other person because the other person too has emotional needs. Okay, back to my question. One of the questions you did not answer. So I can quote you and I say, overdoing the, stop doing overdoing the help thing. Okay. <laughs> so I remember, yeah. I, I, I was talking to a friend and she was very angry that um, mm. the guy she was going to get married to told her that they are going to be sharing the bills 50-50. And she was like, ah, even if I'm going to share it 50-50, does you have to tell me? Wait until we get to the marriage now or something. And she was pissed. So at what point uh, should like <coughs> maybe partner or a woman help a man? No. Because I know I also like I find it very insulting sometimes if a man approach me and say help me with this. I feel like oh, <laughs> you don't have to ask me now. If I know you have the problem, I should see it. Then I'll help you. So at what point? You know it's because from the beginning men have been saddled with the responsibility of providing. So an an average woman um, expects that my man is supposed. Of course, that's what a man is supposed to do, right? Yeah, Provide for his own household, right? But when we say don't overdo the help thing, it doesn't mean you shouldn't help because it has become one already. We do things together, right? Mm. But know when to step aside and be a baby girl. Mm. Mm. Like the things that point. you know that men are supposed to do, let them do it. Because let me tell the mistakes some women do. They've shown themselves too strong mm. that the man is leaving them to do it. Mm. Because ah, she's ah, she be she's strong now. 
let me step aside let her do it your husband is sitting down you are carrying ladder to go and fix light what <laughs> is he doing <laughs> he's sitting down you are carrying everything you can't say honey please carry it <laughs> let me carry it i'm the girl here mm. i don't know if you understand mm. another thing is this when you marry a lead back man mm. huh? some women i'm sorry to say this there's nothing wrong with assisting of course the way the economy is it will be very unfair for you to even leave all the financial pressure your on your husband especially if you know what he earns and you know that okay this is something i can help let me just relieve it mm -hmm. i don't know if you get so it should be something that you do willingly not because you are put under pressure to do i don't know if you get yeah. you don't you're not under pressure to do it but you do it because the two has now become one it, okay talk about people that live in one minute <laughs> so sorry okay <laughs> yeah talk about people that live abroad for instance most of them share bills because yeah. of the way the system works yeah. i've lived there before yeah. i've lived there before and more than takes care of the majority of i think well, i think it got to a point i had to tell him see okay pay the rent i was the one that i suggested not because my mom has never asked me since we got married yeah. we're going to share the bill i want you to do this he's yeah. so i don't know if he's manly the gala money <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> they have money <laughs> they have money <laughs> 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 you yeah. should be able to take care Indeed. of his family i know if you want to do good yeah but but when i saw how the system was working i'm like okay your parents you're, you're paying my school fees at the same time okay let me do food mm. uh, let me take care of the food yeah. you get but when it comes to a point that a man start demanding for mm. the woman to share in the bill i'm sorry to say as a man your respect will come down indeed well it's, very, it's been a very beautiful time with you i, I wish you just spoke <laughs> <laughs> you know how to finish i have a whole lineup of questions oh, oh my wow. god well, well, maybe maybe <laughs> next time, time. I, don't <laughs> no, I don't know all right thank you very much thank you for uh, having one thing me. i have i'm um, taking from the show is um submission is strength put under control yeah. well until next time i will name your host victoria agbi idoko kaiti what is my name bye. all right bye Bye.